I just dropped the cleanest merch of all time. Listen, Slowpoke has been abducted, and the only way to save him is to hit that link in the description. And if you want to keep it fresh, you know what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has finally come. Pokemon Home is here, and we have tons of new Pokemon to play with. You already know that I built a team full of the most beastly things I could think of, and just honestly stuff that I wanted to try out. And I'll tell you what, it did not disappoint because this battle is actually insane, and let's jump into it. Look, these Hisuian Mons have been sitting in my Legends Arceus game forever, and they finally get to stretch the old legs out to make some stuff happen. So, my opponent decides to lead off with Dragapult, I'm gonna go with Mesprit. Now this thing over here with his weird ass dreadlocks is supposed to just kind of be a dual screener and try to set things up for a few things on my team. So Dragapult is not wasting any time. Decides to just drop a Draco that is gonna do pretty much a shit ton of damage to everything on my team. Um, but it's fine. I am able to live that and he does take that special attack drop. And now this Mesprit, it's kind of a lost cause. I figure I might as well just get up a light screen as well and see if I can put used to it. But as you're gonna see, Corviknight comes in like a knight in shining armor, and I already know this shit's about to get defogged into the Shadow Realm, and that's not ideal. But for now, I have dual screens up, and if he does actually defog, I can get myself a solid matchup for some momentum here. And as you're gonna see, one of my favorite Hisuian Pokemon is gotta be the Arcanine. This thing is an absolute legend. It looks amazing, and it's honestly, for sure, one of the scariest mons in the game right now. So I bring in young Cliffard, young Cliff <laughs> Clifford the Big Red Dog, does go for that defog, gets rid of the screens, which is annoying, but now I'm in a position where something's about to get hit with this fucking rockhead. I'll tell you what, this thing gets access to uh, the ability rockhead, which uh, negates recoil damage, and it gets a stab head smash. So I am going to go for the head smash here. Now it's actually an interesting dynamic, he does have the heat trans, so I'm not inclined to go for that flare blitz, because uh, this thing with the flash fire comes in nice and easy, but I figure head smash is a nice little two hit KO. I am actually choice scarf, so I'm able to outspeed a lot. And this thing is honestly what Rampardos wishes it was. That no recoil with a base 150 head smash is actually insane with stab. Of course, I missed the second one, and that allows Heatran to set up some stealth rock. So, like a pissed off little evil frog over there, he does end up, you know, avoiding the head. But you're going to get some head today, boy. I'm <laughs> I have no reason to not just stay in here and continue to just mash uh, head smash. This thing's access to flare blitz and head smash without recoil makes it actually insane if you put a choice band on this thing there's truly nothing that's living that shit give it like terra rock with that head smash and the fbi is going to be at your door so in comes corviknight once again knows that i'm locked into that head smash uh, and of course defensive corviknight is going to be able to take that rather nicely and i do want to conserve clifford now unfortunately this thing also has pressure i'm down to one pp on head smash because i actually didn't have time to max that out so kind of try to conserve that because that's my highest damage um, and pretty much nothing on their team wants to take that, especially once uh, the Corviknight is taken care of. So, uh, I decide to switch back into the Mesprit. This thing pretty much just comes in to uh, be a nice little death fodder. But he actually ends up going for the Roost, and now I figure I am faster and I can set up my Stealth Rock. So, if he wants to defog it, he also gets rid of the Stealth Rock on my side. And I figure it's just nice to have them rocks around. So, this thing actually is going to end up going for the U-Turn. And that's actually fine. It's going to knock me out with a U-Turn, which means that they now have to switch into something. I can then decide to match up accordingly. And I have so many offensive threats on my team. It just kind of depends on, you know, what I want to get going. And I got a lot of shit to try out. And it's about to go crazy. So, on the free switch, they decide to go Sneasler. Looking lanky with his gross claw fingers. And I am very afraid of this thing. Sneasler is seriously one of the most scary new Pokemon that's been released. Um, and they're running a couple different options. I'm thinking maybe this thing is like a scarf or some type of banded set. But I do have the most beautiful Hisuian form, and that is shiny Hisuian Braviary. And this thing actually does a decent job at walling this. So they decide to go for the U-turn. Does in fact get the poison touch, which definitely tells me, yeah, this thing is different than the one I'm using. So I'm not sure exactly what to expect from it, but close combat hits my team really hard, and Braviary is kind of my best answer to it. But in comes the Corviknight. Now this thing is annoying as shit. I really need to get rid of this because it's a good switch into a lot of my things. And I decide to go for that Esper Wing. Now this is a new move introduced just for the Hisuian Big Bird, which is a nice psychic move that actually gives you a speed boost. So I'm actually sitting pretty nice over here, nice and fast, and it's actually looking like I can knock this thing out but I am going to have to commit the Terra. I'm actually running just Terra Psychic just to try to maximize damage on this thing. Um, and I figure it's probably worth it for me to try to go for that. I, I'm thinking Hisuian Braviary, if I can actually just get the knockout here, I'm going to be at plus two speed, faster than everything on their team. And I can still try to uh, try to just disrupt a little bit. So I'm thinking Braviary, we're going for it, buddy. This thing is beautiful, super fun Pokemon to use. 
Um, and I think this thing's actually, it's going to be really good in the months to come. So I put the old eyeball on my fucking head and an Esper Wing with that Terra Boost is going to be enough to take care of the Corviknight. So uh, that thing is gone. That's a huge opening for me. Anytime getting rid of the Corv is going to be... He's going to put you in a way better spot. So I get that nice little plus two on the speed. And now it just depends on what their answer is to this thing. Because I'll tell you what, Braviary is about to feast. You know, being poisoned is actually annoying. Uh, but I'm fast and I hit really hard. So, and you know, I do got that going for me. So they are actually going to end up bringing in the Urshifu here. Now this is a returning Pokemon that is extremely powerful. This thing actually does have access to Aqua Jet, which I totally am just now realizing. And I'm thinking, hold on, I'm kind of bulky, max HP, goes for that Aqua Jet, I'm able to live it with seven, which is actually insane because now an Esper Wing just rips this man to absolute pieces. We don't care how many abs you got, you're going down to the Sylvian Braviary. And that's exactly where that Poison Touch it very much comes into play because now I'm sitting at plus three speed and if this leftovers was just enough to put me over to where poison damage doesn't kill me I could grab another pretty easy KO. Unfortunately, it brings me to 20 and the poison does knock out the the, the bird He is the word and he also just did some shit. So we love to see it I'm actually fine with that getting rid of Urshifu is actually super nice because that was a great check to like a majority of my team but now we have an empty battlefield. I'm thinking I'm gonna show a little cleavage. Sometimes you just gotta you just gotta show a little cleavage. I decide to go into the cleaver, and unfortunately they end up going into the sneezler. And I'm pretty much about to get close combated here. I'm way slower, and that's probably gonna kill. If I had my Terra, I could commit to full bug. Unfortunately, the close combat, yeah, it just takes care of uh, young Grandpa Scyther, and that, that's fine. This thing, it doesn't have the greatest place in OU right now, especially with the set that I'm trying to use on it, but. I have faith because that design is sick, sick as hell and I'm definitely going to be making him work. So uh, that didn't work out too well, but now I'm going to go Sneasler v Sneasler action. Mine does have a little bit of the upper hand here. I'm thinking I can live a close combat. I can then close combat it myself, activate my white herb item after I get that stat drop. And that in turn is going to activate my unburden ability, which doubles my speed after an item is used. And then I'm faster than everything and I hit hard with acrobatic. So that's the plan. With my Sneasler, of course, I just punch right through this thing's face because he goes into the Ghost Tyke Dragapult, and that is, you know, unfortunate. However, I decide I definitely am going to need that Sneasler to stay around. It's it's kind of my answer to a lot of the remaining stuff. They have the Zapdos and the Sneasler in their back pocket, and I decide to go into the Cocaine Bear. I tell you what, draw your Sea Bear circles, or else this thing will literally maul you, because this is also... Uh, one of the, the most difficult mons to work around. So he does go for that Shadow Ball on the switch in, which is super nice. Uh, switching in on this thing actually allows me to grab my, my burn because now I've got Guts activated to boost my already insane like 1 million attack stat. Um, and something's about to die. There's literally nothing switching into this, especially young Lava Toad who comes in and an Earthquake is enough to literally kill every Heatran you've ever seen. Think about every Heatran you've battled against and used and then pile them all together on the same battlefield, they're all dying to that earthquake. And it's that's just what happens against the against the cocaine bear when it gets when it gets on that rampage. So unfortunately, however, I still have to work with this goddamn Sneasel. This thing is fast as hell in close combat, it turns out my team is not a, a fan of. So I kind of have a decision here where I can't really switch out. I have to let this thing stay in, go for that close combat. It does end up knocking out Ursaluna. Um, but what that does do is it gives him that defense drop and now we're gonna go on a little Sneasler versus Sneasler action once again I think it's gonna be really close But if I can take that attack and then in turn knock theirs out I should be in a position to where uh, Sneasler and Arcanine should be able to kind of clean up the match So we got double sneezes out here and I'm also thinking that there is likely choice scarf Maybe it's already super fast, but they actually do end up out speeding me if it was a speed tie I lose it, but I live with 12 HP, which is absolutely insane because now I'm able to go ahead and punch theirs right in the face and with that two defenses dropped, of course, that's going to knock it out and that is going to drop both of my defenses, but also activate my white herb, um, which is going to just give me those defenses back. But more importantly, it does activate the item, which gives me unburden. And now any chance that Dragapult had of being faster is out the window. So they decide to go into Zapdos. Now I'm thinking, okay, all I really need to do is just get some chip on this thing. And the best way to do that is with our new signature move. It's called Dire Claw. So the kicker with Dire Claw is that there's a pretty good chance to inflict a status condition. So I go for that claw, knock it down below half, and put my dude to sleep. That is truly 
the best case scenario. I literally just put him to sleep with the claw. I do actually activate static on there, so there's just hella interactions going on over here. And this is actually the first time I've seen Dire Claw activate a status condition, and that's actually the craziest shit ever. I straight up puts him to sleep. Sneasler is an absolute monster and should be should be a force to be reckoned with. Honestly, maybe banned. I don't I don't know. But that kills the Zapdos in the most brutal way possible. And now the last Pokemon is gonna be that Dragapult. I am paralyzed now, so it is actually faster. So I guess it, it did have some pretty good hopes and dreams of being faster, but uh, they are going to go for that Terra. Just going to commit the Terra because there's no reason not to get that little extra uh, Dragon Stab if I if whatever if I decided to switch into Arcanine. But regardless, um, this thing is going to be able to outspeed. Kill me with the Draco Meteor. And now it all comes to uh, Hisuian Arcanine, who is going to be running that Choice Scarf. Should be able to take a hit, especially now that this thing did go for that Draco Meteor. Um, it's actually a relatively bulky Mon. But a Head Smash, thank God I have at least one of those left. And all I have to do is not miss, for the most part. This thing is, uh, listen, 80 accuracy is not safe. But uh, <laughs> I do end up connecting on the head smash that is going to finish off the Dragapult and the match. And I had a lot of fun with that one. This team is extremely fun to use. Very cool seeing uh, new Pokemon kind of on both sides. And I definitely had a little bit of luck on my side that time. But super fun match. Let me know if you guys enjoyed. I really appreciate the support. I know that I've been slacking on uploading consistently lately. But I'm going to be trying my best. Try to make some more time for it. And I appreciate all you guys and your patience. And uh, see you.